What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Kareem here for SportsRecall.com, and today we are at Wildcard Gym in Los Angeles to talk to none other than the middleweight champ, Peter Quillen. That's right, Kid Chocolate is going to be sitting down with us today to talk about boxing, life, and who knows what else. I can't wait to see what it is, so let's go inside and see what he's going to talk to us about. All right, everybody, what's up? Back here for SportsRecall.com, and you know if we're in a boxing ring today, we are here with my main man, Peter, Kid Chocolate Quillen. Peter, thanks for taking time out your schedule. Well, thank y'all for having me. I appreciate y'all coming by and stopping and getting the latest and greatest on me. No, definitely, and, and the latest and greatest is what we are here to talk about. But, look, 31 wins, no losses, 22 knockouts. Before you were there, though, you were just a little kid growing up in Grand Rapids, Michigan, right? Yes, of course. I, um, my dad was born and raised in Cuba. He met my mom in Chicago. I was born on the northwest west side of Chicago. Like, Chi-town. Chi-town. Yeah, shout out Chi-town. And then I um, grew up all my life in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I was a bas- basically an a infant when we moved to Grand Rapids. And, you know, I, I grew up there until I was like 18 years old and then moved to New York. But that was like where I created and learned everything about myself there in that city, you know what I mean, and where I wanted to go. It started there. Okay, now, did you play any sports growing up, or, you know, what was the first thing you got involved into athletically? Um, well, I was always an athletic guy. I tried out for the basketball team, wasn't confident in doing it, and I, then I decided that it wasn't the way for me to go. And, um, you know, I started, I was dibbling and dabbling with boxing, you know, later in my teen years, and, um, I had an op- uh, opportunity to try out for a football team. And when I went there, they had us run around the track and they kept doing it like, one more time, one more time. And I told my friend, I said, if you tell me one more time, bro, I'm going to run off the field, <laughs> right? Make a long story short, he said, one more time. And all I heard was, like, hey, come back. I was like, I was gone. And, you know, I just like taking boxing full time. And when I did that, it's so funny is because when I used to have to go to the gym, I used to have to run past that field while they was doing their football practice. Okay, so basketball wasn't for you. Football wasn't for you. What was it about boxing? Like, can you remember the day or, or what happened when you said, you know what, this is for me. I'm, I'm going to see how far I can go with these gloves on. I think it was more so like, for me, the challenge was there. It was a challenge that, you know, I was good at fighting in the street, and it was like to really challenge yourself against people that really knew what they was doing too would make it more fair. So I think it was more so that. And then I was a big dreamer. I grew up poor, but I was a big, big dreamer, and I never had dream um, poor dreams. And, you know, boxing really besides music, trying to do music, and I found out it wasn't really me that was supposed to do that. I just felt like that was, that was going to be my way out, you know what I'm saying? And... You know, I'm glad I stuck with it because it actually created me inside the ring to be a a, a good fighter, but also a better man outside the ring. Got you. Now, one thing I want to touch on real quick, because a lot of people, they think they know boxing, they watch boxing, they're fans, myself included. But fighting in the street and fighting in the ring, two completely different things. Of course, you know, because usually when you fight on the street, that first minute in that fight, you breathe in hard, you... (laughs) Your lungs is burning, you know what I mean? Boxing, you had to learn to fight through that part and and actually, you know, go 12 rounds like I'm doing now. So it's like, you know, and then everybody can fight for five seconds too, you know what I mean? It's like, I don't care. You could beat up somebody until you get swung and hitting the nose and your nose started bleeding. No matter what you did to him and maybe you beat that other guy up, just because your nose is bleeding, you lost the fight. There you go. Now, was there any one person in particular that was like a mentor to you or kind of pushed you into boxing, or was it just something you came up with by yourself? Well, you know, I I think everybody so much played a part in the story, like my older brother Craig and my my friend Rodney Joby and then, you know, my friend um, Keon, who who started off with me, and then, you know, one of my, my past friends, Cliff, you know, and then Thomas. You know, everybody kind of played a role, but it was ultimately me that chose to make that part of my life. You know what I mean? It was like... You know, it, it's funny how the story goes. It's like it goes so deep, man. It was like I could tell you a million stories, but you know, we, we're gonna get to some of them. I, yeah, what well, the story that brought me here is like just that determination to really wanna to 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 
to be good at something. You know, I, I, I never came around, I never was around good people growing up. And then, you know, just to really inspire people to do good things through what I do and what people would consider a violent sport, I think it's a great thing. Okay. Now, you said obviously you had to move or you chose to move to New York, 18 years old. It's not like you had a lot of money in your pocket. You know, was it somebody that you knew in New York? What, what gave you the confidence to say, you know what, I got to leave Michigan and, and go see what's going to be next for me? Well, my, my trainer I was working with in Grand Rapids, Michigan, he actually here right now. Um, we just brought him back for this camp, working with me. Um, you know, we, we, we had a long, deep history and had an opportunity for me to move to New York City. I always wanted to move to New York. And it was so funny is because when we was little, I was like, yo, son. You know, I was talking like I was from Brooklyn and all that. Had the East Coast slang? Yeah, yeah, I had the East Coast slang. I, I just wanted to be there. And it was somewhere I wanted to be. And, um, you know, me and his story was so crazy because, you know, we didn't we always, we didn't never always see eye to eye. And I end up homeless, man. I end up out on the street, man. And, you know, it's something that, you know, was part of the story that people don't like to talk about. But, you know, I'm, I'm open with it because I, I learned that, you know, even with God, man, you know, you have to go through struggles to learn about who you are. And I, I don't regret none of the things I ever went through, sleeping on the train, like not knowing where I was going to go. You know what I mean? I had to bring him back so he can forget himself. You know what I mean? Because he, he knew it was like a a bad thing to be in my shoes at that time. And I was a kid too. So, you know, when I moved there, I just learned that, you know, um, New York was a hard place because it seemed like everybody is trying to do what you're trying to do and be good at it. So that's what that brought up the, comp um, the competition level. Now, you said even though maybe you didn't have much growing up and maybe you didn't come from much, you always dreamed big, you always thought big. Even like being homeless. It's, it's hard to dream big when you don't have a roof over your head. Did you give yourself a time limit? Did you give you, you know, were you telling yourself, I'm, I'm going to go at it for how long until you make it? Well, of course, when I moved there, I had goals there set for myself. And I told myself my goals was going to be good at boxing, get some um, education, which I, would, I was dropped out of school out of, at 11th grade, um, make God like the sole provider for my life, and um those three things, and if all us for, I was going to go to the military. That's what I told myself. But um, I became a champion of the world. As a champion, I got my GED. And I tell you right now, every day is a testament towards my faith because I'm trying to build who God wants me to be every day. You know what I'm saying? And that, that's like no games. That's no games. No matter what y'all think about me, I just think that God is the reason for everything, especially the struggles I've been through and everything. And I didn't have to go to the military because that's not the path he wanted me to take. But I do respect a person fighting for a reason. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, a lot of people I, I've been came across, you know, always had not a good reason to be a fighter for what they do. You know, you're fighting for money, you're fighting for cars, you're fighting for girls, you're fighting for drugs or alcohol. It's never going to come the way it's supposed to be if you're fighting for a positive reason. Got you. Now, Peter Quillen, outside the ring. Inside the ring, your kid chocolate. Who ended up giving you the name? Um, uh, some trainers from Grand Rapids, Michigan. It was a Cuban guy, and it was a, a, a Puerto Rican guy. You know, when they found out I was Cuban, they're like, "You look like this original kid chocolate." He was Cuban. You ever heard him? I was like, "Nah," you know, because I didn't even care then. And when I moved to New York, I opened up a box in encyclopedia and seen the original kid chocolate. And I used to call my when they gave me that name, kid chocolate. I said, "I'm gonna start calling my name kid Coco." But when I opened that box in Encyclopedia, I learned so much history on the original Kid Chocolate. It's kind of like we had the same kind of story. He moved to New York from, you know, Havana, Cuba, from to New York and became a real big draw there. And I just had asked, I just, I just wanted to be big like that, but also letting people know that it was a great fighter before me with the same name who fought for his own legacy and fought for his own reasons. And, you know, it's from where my father is from. And, you know, I, I'm very prideful about the original because he said he, he, he planted the, the footsteps for me to walk in right now. When you're talking about following in footsteps was, you know, looking in the boxing encyclopedia, once you got up on your history of, you know, everybody that came before you, was there any specific boxer that you said, that's the guy I want to be like, or that's who I'm going to model my style or my career after? Or were you just trying to be the first you? I wanted to be the first me because I think you can all, I, I got this thing where you, you can try to be like other people. You will never find yourself, though. You can lose yourself trying to be like other people. So I never was that kind of a person. I used 
people as models, you know what I'm saying, of, you know, you know, being a good example and, and how I could be a good example to the next generation. But I like my I like Mike Tyson growing up. I liked um, you know, Sugar Ray Robinson, um, Hagler, um, Sugar Ray Leonard. I just met him recently and I told him he inspired me not to retire broke. You know what I'm saying? I really wanna um make sure I'm I'm different from the rest. You know? Having your business straight. Yes, of course. You know, so we we buy property now. You know what I'm saying? Just so I can make sure after my career in boxing, it's not gonna be something I'm worried about. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause that's not the way God has made us. He not made us warriors. And I think I just gotta do the smart things while I'm here. You know, my uncle just passed away of cancer. You know, his only worry was if, if he would make it in heaven or not. When he was in his fourth stage of pancreatic cancer, he was going into hospice care, and he told me that, and I and I realized something in the same moment. It's like, you know, if you got the chance to do the right thing while you're here, it's better off taking that route than trying to take an easy way out. Definitely, and that's that's deep, you know. You, you do enough fighting in the ring, you don't want to be fighting for something in your life once you decide to hang up the gloves. Right, of course, you know, because this fight is different. This fight I prepared. I had 10 weeks to train for this, and I trained before I came, so I was well prepared, you know what I'm saying? But when you having cancer, most families is not prepared to, for that to happen. That's why it's devast you know, so so devastating for families that have a family member pass or have cancer. So, you know, I'm really now at this point in my life, man, I'm 31 years old. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get – I'm not – I'm gonna, I want to be an old wise man, you know what I'm saying? Because young dummies – you know, they have a chance to grow into old wise men, but like young dummies never want to grow into old fools. That's true. That's true. Now, you talked about there's something in your family with your uncle passing, obviously, like you said, just hard for anybody to deal with. Then on the other side, the way life balance out, you also, you know, want to tell you congratulations, you being a, a proud father now. Yeah, now I know kind of why my, me and my father have a great relationship why he's instilled the things that he has. And I'm just glad I got some of the same characteristics in me and wanted to do the same for my own. You know, because so funny, man. I got brothers. I'm the, out of my mom's kids, I'm the, um, I'm the last kid to have, I'm a, her last son to have a kid. I'm 31 year I'm the second oldest, so I got two younger brothers. They both got kids. They got, one of them got like four or five of them, and the other one got like two of them. And I just got one. And um, I was always, inspired to tell them how to you know do this and try that and oh um, man you ain't got kids so you never know what that's gonna be like you know what i'm saying now i got a kid and and I, and I got something that was just told to me recently that that a man you can define a man in the way he raises his children so you know what i'm saying like all those that advice that i was giving to my brothers that i feel like sometimes they didn't listen to it's gonna shine within my own kid now i don't have i don't have to worry about trying to make other people better i got my own that I have to worry about and now for me it's the best excuse I can ever have to say no to people and just focus on me you know what I'm saying now especially last question and we're gonna let you get you know warmed up a little bit your son looking up to you following what dad does if he comes to you in a little while and says pops you know where where are my gloves at I want to get in the ring and get busy what are you gonna tell him well it's kind of gonna be kind of crazy to you know tell him that he can't do something but you know um you know i think i was created to be a fighter man you know what i'm saying so if that's what he felt like he was created to do then my job as a father is just to support him but i'm gonna tell him like boxing is not easy boxing you know when you have like i had a lot of negative energy i had to fight through and that's what made me a good fighter and that's the reason why i'm a good fighter it's not because i have anything to prove to nobody it's because that was the only thing that i was in control of it's me being prepared for fights so i'm like son listen dad fought so hard so you didn't have to fight so hard dad fought so hard that all you have to do is just be smart and as long as you being smart and if fighting is part of you being smart then you know poppy want to support you but other than that you know what i'm saying i would like you to play drums or something you know what i mean that's easy to beat those things up but like you know um but for the most part I just want him just to do what he feel like he want to do got you all right we're gonna let peter get warmed up go through a couple of things with his trainer we all know he's always staying sharp and we'll come back and finish up with him just a little bit sportsrecall.com